Hey y'all, this is Cindy. I'm the Tireless Tangler and you've arrived unbelievably at day 45 of the 100 Days of Zentangle Project 2020. Thank you all so much from the bottom of my heart for being with me today. Our tangle is going to be Crazy Blossom by Kat Kwan and we will step that out in a minute. But first, I want to remind you guys to check out uh, Aishwara Darba's channel at Tangle Inspire if you would like to put this tangle in the string for this week. So uh, she has got a Facebook group and all kinds of links going on over there. So uh, go check her out. All right. So this is a picture of basically of Crazy Blossom. Now I think I was too smooth around the edges so I don't really have the true essence of this tangle here but this is basically uh, what we're going to work on today and it's going to be lots of fun and so because it's so flowery I decided to do another ink tense tile and so this time I used a cadmium uh, yellow and uh, no a cadmium orange and uh, this is I believe sun yellow or cad yellow anyway I don't know but I just did a wash. Uh, the difference today was that I actually put the pencil on the tile and then wet it down. So I basically colored in the tile with uh, meshing the two colors over each other and then, uh, and then swiped over it with my brush wet down and uh, activated it. So I put a short video and I'm gonna stick the video for this at the very end so that if you're interested in how that looked and all of that business, I also dabbed this with a tissue so that I would get some of this um, more interesting spots. So uh, just for visual, visual interest, and if you prefer your smooth, then that can be done as well. Okay, so, so this is very similar to some things like uh, patterns like Jenny Lee or uh, it's also very, very similar in construction to popsicles that we did earlier this week. So let me show you how this goes. Now, in this uh, example, I in the uh, step out, she has this outer. We start with the outer ring, and it's and she is making jaggedy lines. And I don't think I got mine nearly jaggedy. Mine were more curvy the way I tend to be. So I'm gonna really try to put some, some interesting stuff in this outer rim. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to do uh, concentric, I'm not gonna say circles, <laughs> say orbs this time. Uh, and they're gonna have a lot of visual interest. So let's start and see what I end up with. So on the outer edge, you're just going to Make it as jaggedy and interesting as you possibly can. Okay. And on the, the next round, we're going to want to do that, but as I discovered on my, on this, when I followed the curves, then I ended up with these little uh, blacked in spots lining up and I really don't want that. I want there to be some offset on that. So on this one, I'm not going to pay any attention to what I did on the last one. I'm just going to do this next row uh, or section on its own regardless of what I did before. Okay, that may be more interesting than I was looking for, but we'll see. Okay, then I'm going to make another one also, regardless of the curves of the one that came before. All right, and then in the middle, I'm just going to put a pretty little circle. Okay, so uh, the next part of this is what I would like to call intuitive, meaning that there's really no right or wrong way to do this. You can't really choose wrong here. But what you want to do is choose some spots and I try to choose the spots that are sort of dipped in because I think that's a natural place to do this step. And we're just going to connect them with a line and then round the edges sort of like this. Okay? 
And so I'm going to move around and I can put these as frequently or as loosely as I want to. And I want you to think of this as sectioning this into petals. Okay? So that may help. It may not. And these lines that you're drawing in always want to point at this center dot. Okay? All of the lines we do on this are going to want to point at the middle. That way you don't get all screwed up with your lines pointing in a way that makes the, that interrupts the flow, if you will. Okay, so now I have sectioned this into its own little petal, okay? And that's what we wanna do going around. So each place where you feel like there is a natural um, spot where you would like to divide and have a petal, you can do that. If you want them wide, you can make them wide. If you want them narrow like this, you can have them narrow like that. It's, uh, again, in very intuitive. This is your art, and you decide, ooh, I think that would look good there, or I don't think that's the right spot. So just go through, section it where you feel like it's the most appropriate, round the edges on that, and always point your lines in toward the center. I'm kind of enjoying this today. Of course, it's a good day. It's a great day. My little one and I are so thrilled to be together forever. Like I said, we still have paperwork and stuff to work out and it'll probably still be months before anything is finalized, but we are ecstatic. The pressure is gone and so I expect for it to take us several months we've been in fight-or-flight mode now for years and it's gonna take us months to unwind and relax and figure out that you know <laughs> there's more to go on to life than fighting a battle like this and I think I'm gonna see my darling relax and be able to be a kid again and just focus on fun and uh, I think I'm going to have a very different kid. I think he's going to be carefree in a way that he has never experienced in his life and I think that's going to be a lovely thing to watch. I I hope that this this eases some of the fears that he has and makes it easier for him to sort of deal with what he's got. I got a hug this morning. That was the first one I'd had in a while that I didn't have to ask for, so I was happy about that. You know, kids like stuff and old people like hugs. That's the way it is. You want to make your old mom happy? Hug her. Especially now. All right, so I've got my outer row done. Let's do the inner two. So this one's definitely going to be in. And this is what I mean by, by ignoring the outer line. Then I have uh, dips here that are not the same, that do not match here. So it's going to be much easier for me to play in here. I think I'll do this one here. And once again, I'm just choosing some natural spots where I want to divide. Drawing a line. This is what I was wanting to avoid. But that was my choice. I did it. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, okay, so here I have a couple of choices. I can do this here and have this situation again. Or I can make this short and do it here. And I'm going to choose to do that because I like the offset quality. And so I'm gonna divide this one here. And again, on yours, you may do as you wish. And I am not God, I don't know everything. So you guys, listen to yourselves, listen to your instincts. You're gonna be great at this. Okay. I gotta dodge that bullet. I think I'm gonna make this one big and just skip right on over here. 
I don't think I had any better opportunities. And we'll do this one. And again, each one of these is pointing towards that middle section to that middle circle or orb, again, in my case. I think I'm going to leave it there on the second row. And now on this last one, again, I'm going to do the same thing. Just choosing sections that I feel are natural places to divide these into little petal shapes. Um, again, I don't want to put that there. Uh, let's do this one and see where we're at. Um, hmm. They're working me hard today. Um, I really feel like this needs a line. I'm going to go ahead and put one in that's not quite in a dip but I'm going to make it work. And then uh, that one needs a division, but I really don't want to divide it the way it needs to be divided, but I'm going to do it anyway. Remember, when you get in places like that and you're not sure, just trust the pattern to work. Because most of the time they do. All right, so most of the hard work is done now. Now all we need to do is fill this with Aura lines, okay? And once again, the, the uh, recommendation here, and again, you don't have to follow them, is to point all of your lines at the center, okay? So I'm going to, and I'm going to, even though not in the step out, as I do my lines, I may try to stick a sparkle in there. And remember, a sparkle is just a blank spot in, a, in an otherwise inked area. So um, I would do that just like this. And I don't want to do much or I'll lose the effect of the lines. Now I may want to switch pens. This is a pretty large nib for this fine line work. But I don't want to switch in the middle of a section, so I'm going to go ahead and finish this up. Well, the sparkling does um, seem to uh, give some interest, so I do like that effect. Once again, I'm not going to put very many in. Just enough to uh, lighten that line load. And part of the joy of this pattern is the densely packed lines. So you do not have to do this if you really want to keep it dark uh, and really intense. And you can definitely keep your, your um, lines full. All right. Uh, that's so pretty. I really like it. All right, next row. Pointing at the center circle as you shift your tile, and please do shift your tile if you can, or your book or notebook or whatever you're using. You're gonna get a much more natural flow and if you just keep going towards that middle circle, you're going to be golden. It's going to be perfect. I want to say hi to Marietta or Marietta in Holland today. I hope you are hanging in there, lady. Uh, I want to say I have a new follower named Lori who shared some cool stuff with me or Lori Ann. I'm not sure. Uh, thank you so much for being with us. All of you people that are just starting on your Zentangle journey, there are a lot of you that are watching these right now. I want you to know that uh, we welcome you and this art form welcomes you and we hope that you find the joy in it that we have found. Um, that is certainly true for me. 
So welcome. I hope that you guys will find not just in this time, but as you return to your lives, if you're able to do that, um, that you will keep this with you in your back pocket. And if you're busy, this is a great way to relax, to just grab something small to draw on and just let yourself focus on each stroke of the pen. Oh, this is turning out so pretty. I really, really, really like it. What do you guys think? I, I suspect this is going to be one of those that you guys are thrilled with. You really like to cross your heart. I did too. That's a good one. But see how much the sparkling makes a difference in here. It's really, it's really a nice touch. So you may do it. And if it, if you can't get a good result, then stick with your uh, straight lines and, or your slightly curved lines or whatever you've got. And as you turn your tile, remember to point these lines at the center circle. <coughs> Excuse me. Don't forget to breathe. Relax your shoulders and just enjoy yourself. Enjoy the stroke of the pen. Just let your troubles go and focus on the stroke of the pen. I don't know why this is going so well for me today. I suspect it's because I am much more relaxed than I normally am. which is a good thing. Well, that was a little interesting, but I think once we get everything together, nobody's going to care. All right, one last row, and we will be done with this one. I adore this pattern. It's very zenful, and it has such a lovely result. It works so nicely with color. Don't forget to keep pointing your strokes right at the middle section. Okay. If you do that, then the rest of it will work out. So what is going on in you guys' lives? Where are you guys at in the in the opening up or closing down or sheltering in place situation? Uh, where are you at in your state or country? What's going on out there? Um, the news is so terrible these days and the U.S. has got like what? A million and a half cases right now. That's, that's just incredible to me. And yet everybody's opening back up like everything's fine. So I'm, I definitely have feelings about that. I understand that economically we really need to get things rolling again. But... This is forcing people who are in my situation, like, for example, yesterday when I, I, have, I am three weeks out of major surgery and uh, had an atypical pneumonia last year, so I'm at high risk for that, and, uh, you know, forcing us to go out and go to court and all of those things. So, um, you know, because that's what they're doing. So, and of course, precautions were taken, and I'm not saying they weren't, but, but that's not my point. My point is, are we rushing to get back to normal and, and going to cause ourselves more issues in the rush? So, I don't know. I don't know what, what's up in the UK. How are you ladies 
and gentlemen in the UK faring. I know that in Europe, um, I think they're hitting the second wave or something. So uh, I'm worried about you guys. I wanna know that you're safe and sound. What about uh, Mariam in Greece? How are you doing, lady? And my Canadian people, I got a lot of you guys. Don't pretend I don't. And <laughs> I'm so proud. I can't remember which one of you gave me a y'all A from from uh, Canada. When I was doing that, I, I didn't think of it until editing. I went, man, I should have said y'all A to the Canadians, but uh, it didn't occur to me. So I thought that was funny. Thank you for saying that. That was awesome. Let's just keep tangling and let the world figure itself out for a while. Keep ourselves safe. And we'll see what happens. The worst thing that can happen for us if we do that is we're going to have a great big stack of awesome art at the end. I have been trying to decide. I really want a display of this year's project, and I have a great big sketch pad that's like, well, it's like half my size. It's big. Uh, with some decent paper in there, and I was wondering if there was a way I could figure out, I could use those little corner things uh, like they use for photographs and put and stick my tiles uh, on like that, the way we did in seminar, CZT seminar. CZT, by the way, if you're new, stands for Certified Zentangle Teacher, and uh, it's not that we know anything more than anybody else, because you can be a CZT if you, I mean, if you have the money, and they're running the seminars, you can be a CZT as soon as you can get scheduled and go. Um, you don't have to ha know anything in particular. Uh, they, you know, they want you to come prepared. But, um, but um, that's, uh, it's not that we're special. It's that we have had that beautiful, zenful experience of, of uh, learning this the real way, learning the method of Zentangle, and we are all so blessed, and it's not that we have a special club, it's that we, it's that we are so amped up about Zentangle that um, that's all we want to talk about. I mean, am I right, my CZTs out there? I know I have some of you guys. You probably cringe at me sometimes, but there we go. <laughs> Thank goodness you love me anyway. You got to. So that's in the CZT training. Love for your fellow man. It's not. You know, one of the one of the things at training that that impacted me the most was at the very end when when they didn't tell you, okay, now when you go out there, don't don't do this and don't do that. And they didn't give us a bunch of rules. You know what they told us? Go out and do good things. I mean, that's their whole philosophy. Go out and do good. To me, that says it all. Oh my gosh, how awesome did this turn out, guys? Really, really awesome, huh? Okay, so uh, I am going to use my, am I going to use my Koi water brush for this to shade? I think I am, just because uh, I, Ooh, I'm trying to decide. <laughs> I'm trying to decide. Just because I think, I think it'll work pretty well here. I think we need a little bit darker than graphite. I don't want to gray out my color too much. So for shading, and this is my gray Koi coloring brush pen. I do not have a set of these. Uh, I think it was Beth that was talking um, about this, um, and I'm not sure uh, if those uh, Koi brushes you have are the same, but if they say Koi and they say coloring brush pen, you're probably using the same thing I am, and this is just a light gray, okay? Although I wouldn't mind having a set of these in color so that I could really... Um, 
really play with them and have fun. So I'm just gonna stroke on a little bit and you would do exactly like this with your pencil. Just gently going around your edges. Putting a little depth around each one of these little petals around the outside. You wanna go all the way around your element. And this is going to set each one of these uh, sections apart, okay? And I'm probably gonna use some right here in the middle and really darken that. And remember, I'm gonna blend these out here in a minute, so. Um, oh, this is gonna look so awesome. I am stoked on this. I hope you guys are turning out as well as mine. I was completely zenned out with this. I enjoyed it tremendously. I think this is so simple and yet makes such a nice result. I hope you guys are gonna enjoy this as much as I have. And I'm just stroking the color on very lightly. I'm trying really hard not to scrub, and I know you can hear it uh, in the mic, but I'm really not scrubbing hard. I'm just barely laying it down. It's grabbing the color. The paper is grabbing the color and soaking it in. And then here in a minute, I'll take my little blender marker, colorless blender marker, and uh, sort of shade this out a little bit. Now, on the outer layer, this is what I'm going to do. Some of you may think differently about this, but this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to run my koi brush right around the, the outer edge because what this is going to do, in my opinion, is to um, sort of puff those out, if that makes sense. So um, I'm gonna try it, we're gonna see. Maybe a terrible idea, I don't know, but I think it's gonna work okay. And then here in the middle, where I have my little sparkles going on, then I will probably either use a charcoal pencil to brighten that area or um, a white um, Prismacolor. Um, again, the white Prismacolor is very effective, but it also uh, obscures your lines a little bit. So uh, that's not my first choice. Of course, the charcoal pencil does that to some extent as well. I really like shading with this. Um, I don't know. I know that I got mine from Zentangle um, for free. Not for free. What am I saying? For, for a single, I didn't have to uh, buy it in a pack. So uh, I believe that you can buy them from Zentangle if you want singly. And I also wanted to mention, I don't know if I've said this before, that Zentangle.com has a very good deal with Sakura, uh, the one that makes all of the pens and gel pens that we use. And so frequently I find good deals on Zentangle that are better even than what's on Amazon for some of this stuff. So check your prices on like uh, the Moonlight gel pens that, that are for uh, drawing on black and uh, those kinds of things from Sakura, the jelly rolls, the Sakura makes the jelly rolls and uh, they also make these Koi pens. And uh, so check your prices, you know, check the price at Amazon and then go to Zentangle and see, you know, what they're, what they've got going on there. And uh, because they use these in the project packs, you can also get their set in gray, which is new. And uh, I have not tried mine out, my jelly rolls in gray, but I want to. Um, that's an interesting shading option. Also, if you are not aware, gel pens are water-based. So uh, all of the things I'm doing with my Koi brush pen, you can do with gel pens. You just have to um, make sure that you're, you know, cleaning your brush. There's a technique to it, but you can, you know, use a water brush and mix them and all that good stuff. So what I'm using right now is a waterless or a colorless blending thing, uh, 
from a Tombow that I have with my markers. It has no color in it, but it's slightly wet. And uh, it gives me a little bit more control over the moisture than what is in my aqua brush. So I'm gonna use this to sort of blend this out just a little bit. I don't want lines, but I also don't wanna draw my pigment away from the base there. So I'm just gonna run it along the outside in a sort of up and down motion. And if you get a lot of pigment on your uh, blender brush or on your aqua brush, then just use a paper towel and wipe it off and it will be good to go for you again. So I've added quite a bit of dark here, which is what I wanted. I do like the dark around the edge, although I think I'm getting too much pigment here. We'll come across, we'll come through with our charcoal pencil and make this really pretty. Okay, I'm just lightly stroking this on too. I'm not scrubbing hard. Again, you, no matter what paper surface you are using, be gentle with the tooth. The tooth of the paper is what's called is the surface. And uh, if you scrub on it too much, you will destroy it, which means it will no longer accept anything that you put on it. And we want our paper, whatever type we're using, to continue to take uh, pens and, and color and water and all of that stuff. So you really don't want to scrub too much. You just want to lightly draw it over that area. And your goal is not to scrub the paper, but to move the pigment. Just shift the pigment a little bit. And that's what we're doing. Oh, this is so pretty. Kind of pumped about this one, guys. I sure hope yours turns out well. It's nice when we have these that turn out because then then, uh, then all the ones that don't turn out nicely are feel not quite so harsh. <laughs> and believe me, I have my own share of those. You've probably seen a few of them this, this month. I can't believe we're almost halfway through this project. I'm already starting to get sad about for when it was when it is over. But we'll have to think of some other things we can do to entertain ourselves. I will still be here. Of course, I said that last year and I took an eight-month break. But I needed to. <laughs> I needed the break. I am hopeful that without all the stress that I am able to handle some things um, a little bit better. Now, um, just, you know, stress is a, is a killer. All right, now I'm moving inside. I think this really turned out nicely. And I think once we add a little white highlight here, it's gonna be amazing. And once again, I'm just gonna shift my pigment a little bit. So I don't have a long line there. And again, I'm barely touching the paper. I'm just gently smoothing this around. And then this one, I got a little crazy on that, didn't I? Might have to lift some of that out. But before we make that decision, let's let it dry. I definitely need to lift some of that out. Um, aqua brush, where is it? Um, okay, we'll just try this. I got a lot more pigment in here than I intended.
Now I'm working the tooth of the paper hard. I'm not scrubbing, but I am rubbing over it. And it does not like that. Although, again, these Zentangle tiles will take a lot. All right, so I'm gonna stop. Let this dry for a second. And then we are going to use the fabled, the only charcoal pencil. Well, that's press my cover. I don't want that. There we go. Need to sharpen this poor little thing. Okay. On the outer layer, I can probably start a little bit. So what I'm going to do with, this is my general, uh, my white charcoal pencil from Zentangle. It's from General Pencil Company here in the U.S. One of the best charcoal pencils I've ever used. I bought a complete bulk amount of a cheaper brand of white charcoal. I figured, you know, it's white charcoal. How bad can it be? There's a big difference, huge difference. It broke apart. It, it had hard spots all up in it. It was a mess. And so I just quit using them because they were that bad. You know, and then you get one of these in your hand and you're like, wow, this is what a, this is what a charcoal pencil should be like. Now, the off part of that is that this is going to, again, uh, obscure some of the color. So another option for this would be uh, to shade with colored pencil. Um, uh, I could normally do some of that, but I, I really don't have time on these videos to get into that. One of these days, we'll do something colory. Did you eat fruit? What? Did you eat fruit? Yeah. Did you lie? No. You ate a pear? Yeah. I ate another one. Oh, it was good, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. And, um, and, uh, some people did down my, uh, my chin. Yeah. And, and luckily I had a pig tongue. Yeah, I told you it was going to be juicy. All right. Now, I'm not sure what I think about the white charcoal pencil. I think I liked the color gradient a little bit more uh, without that. But this definitely needs some help over here. I may let that, it's not completely dry, so I may let that dry a little bit more and then uh, go in um, with a Prismacolor white pencil and sort of lighten that up but this is our tangle today it is crazy blossom this is absolutely one of my favorite ones we've done and i hope you have enjoyed this video remember if you would like to uh, add this to your journaling string to go and check out tangle and inspire channel here on youtube and see what aish is up to today all right, guys, I'm going to see you tomorrow for day 40, whoa, 46. I can't even wrap my mind around it. I'll see you tomorrow for day 46. Bye.